Um, anyway, culture is everywhere. Uh, we've, we, again, we've defined, we've talked a lot about, the, the, obviously, the differences, uh, the uniqueness, the diversity. Um, we've defined that church culture as the collective attitude, it's the environment, the setting, the health, the personality, dynamics that are in play that create a unique uh, gathering of believers. Now, we, we can all, you know, when it comes to an apostolic church, obviously our doctrine is the same, we believe the same, but the culture can be um, diverse, amen. Not saying one's better than the other, as, as we, I, I mention that often. Uh, we, when you go to different countries and you worship, uh, when we were in Dominican Republic this, just a few months ago, and obviously they speak another language, but uh, the first service that we were in was in a building, oh, maybe a little bit bigger than this building. And, uh, and I know sometimes our music gets loud here, but they had these gigantic speakers in, in the corners up here, and they had them in the back corners as well, and they had it so loud. I mean, well, and, and two, I mean, the windows are open as you're, as you're walking up, so you, you can hear it three blocks down the road. That's one of their forms of outreach. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're a neighbor to that church, you're going to hear the gospel every time there is there. So, uh, that, again, that's part, that's how they, that's how they, to me, that's like, wow, that's, that's you know, different. Uh, their, their early, or their pre-service prayer I mean, it's intense, and again, uh, I, I, it, it was good, but it was, it was different. Uh, we're going to be in Grenada here in a couple of weeks, and Grenada, uh, of course, it's a different nation. It's, it's, it's almost down towards the equator, so it's really hot, it's humid. None of the churches have air conditions, so the windows are open, the doors are open, the fans are going, it's hot. Uh, one church, there's a, uh, the pulpit is here, and there's a back wall about right here. It's got a curtain, and there's a lizard that comes to church every, every service. And because the fluorescent lights attracts bugs, so the lizard comes to have supper, and that guy is right there over my shoulder as I'm preaching. So, different. Uh, the music is different. Uh, also, all of that, I mean, to say it's unique, but yet we preach the same message. Uh, but to, to not just note the differences that cultures have, um, if I were to boil it down, culture has a lot to do with behavior. Uh, we mentioned this a few weeks ago, culture does not define truth, but culture is certainly influenced by your perception of truth because truth affects behavior, amen? Uh, a people who follows after truth will develop a culture that reflects truth. So we believe that. Uh, we talked a lot about separation. We don't want to be a part of the, of, the, of the world system that we're living in. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Uh, Paul said to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we, we, we strive for that, and that, that alone separates us from the world culture. And what we do, the world looks at us thinking, man, these guys are crazy. No, 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 we're not. We're, we're following after the one that matters, right? And so our actions should, obviously, should show that. Uh, the word conformed means to shape one's behavior, to be conformed to a pattern or mold. Uh, any, anything, we want to pattern our life after what the Word of God says, right? Amen. So again, that in itself creates a culture. Uh, it's more than just looking a certain way. We know that, but it comes down to really one's character and how many are thankful that God doesn't just change the outside but he he, he gets a hold of the heart uh, amen my, my father-in-law would always say it doesn't matter what color you paint the pump if the water is run it's going to it's going to remain run just just because you you paint a different color don't mean anything I'm thankful that God gets a hold of the heart he changes everything so again our character our behavior um, last week we mentioned where Jesus was kind of, he was introducing how one um, should respond as opposed to the quote, old way. He said, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, 
that you ought to turn the other cheek. Again, that, that went against what they were used to. It was, it was different. You heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But Jesus said, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Opposite or different from what they had been told prior. It was how to respond appropriately according to Jesus. Remember a few, several years ago, you had the bracelets that had WWJD. What would Jesus do? And he was saying that this is how you respond. You, we don't control the environment, we don't, but we, we do control our response. Well, this leads me to my, my text this morning, and it's Luke's version of what Matthew wrote that we shared last week. Luke chapter 6, verse 27. Jesus, of course, speaking. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And here, verse 31. And just as you want men to do to you, do also to them likewise. Uh, Eugene Peterson's paraphrase of scripture in the message he says it this way here is a simple rule of thumb for behavior ask yourself what you want people to do for you then grab the initiative and do it for them how you treat others amen uh, we live in a very egocentric world meaning uh, we live as if the world revolves around us, about me. It's all about me. Well, the culture that Jesus is a part of, uh, it's not about us. It's about him. It's about others. It's, it's, it's not looking in. It's looking out. So Ralph Waldo Emerson he quoted the saying, he said, It is one of the most beautiful compensations of this life that no man can sincerely try to help another without helping himself. Now, I don't know, I, I can only assume uh, when I say that we've all found it to be true that when you serve someone, when you give, it feels good to give. Now again, you may not agree with that. Uh, if not, it's probably a reflection of something within you. But I, I, for me, it feels, it's like ministry. And I know ministry is a calling, and, and, and God has called me to, you know, I'm doing what God has called me to do. Uh, but it's more than just, I don't know, I enjoy serving. Um, and, and again, I, I enjoy more blessed to give than it is to receive. There, there is a quality there that, that, that I enjoy. Now, our natures are not wired that way naturally. Typically, that's not the case. You ask a child to share their toys, they're going to object to that. <laughs> they're not going to like that. But again, you teach them that, hey, this is, you know, if you teach them when they're young, it, 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 they, they develop this, this mindset that, you know what, it's not all about me. Um, I was reading a story about a, a well, it was a, a book that he was telling a story about a teacher that was asking her students and these are I think first or second grade students and she's asking them what do you want to be when you grow up and so there's you know they're saying I want to be a police officer a firefighter a doctor a, if you were if like me when I was a second grade I wanted to be a trash truck rider I was I, I wanted to ride on a trash truck and never got, I've never got to do that yet but uh, but they were they were saying all these things they wanted to be these dreams they had and come down to the to the last young young boy and they said, okay, what would you like to be? And, and he stood up and said, I want to help everyone here uh, experience their dream. I mean, the teacher could have had an altar call right then. Yeah. To think that this little seven-year-old boy was, was that introspective that, you know what, I want to help all of these people be what they want to be. And again, that's, that's, that is a story. They, they, he said it was a true story. I'm assuming it was. But that's certainly not something that's, that's natural within our, within our nature. Um, so when, when you look at a, at, a, at a 
a, a church culture. You, you don't get a great church culture by accident. Now again, think about the, the, the idea, the structure of the church. We're a corporate body. We're all individuals. We all come from different walks of life. Uh, we have our own culture within our families. There's, you know, I remember when, when you know, my mom would make what she called sloppy joes. And I, I, they were great sloppy joes. Well, then I go to my, my wife's or, or who, where, anywhere, anywhere else. Their sloppy joes ain't like my mom's sloppy joes. Because a lot of them sloppy joes is out of a can called Manwich. <laughs> my mom made it homemade. And it didn't taste nothing like the can. And so I prefer my mom's sloppy joes. Everybody has those kind of stories where, again, this is the way you're family. So we have all these diversity, but we come together as a body of believers. And again, it's, a, it's an amazing uh, thing that God shows himself powerful in what his spirit brings unity. But we come together and, and we, we create a culture. And, and we're striving to have a great church culture. But that does not happen on, by accident. But a lot goes into building a healthy church culture. Uh, it is done very intentionally. Uh, the, the only culture that you or we are going to get is the one that you cultivate. Now, I promise you, you can drive these country roads and you see now the, the fields most have all been planted and there's, there's these plants that are sprouting and corn, corn now that's about knee high and beans and cotton. And I promise you, that that farmer doesn't drive by and say, oh my goodness, there's corn there. He knew what he was planting. He was intentional about that, right? You, you, the culture you get is the one that you cultivate, all right? So I'm going to ask you I'm gonna ask a question. What, what attributes, what, how would you, what descriptions, whatever the word is, that we as a church should, that we should cultivate that's going to help us produce a healthy church culture. Anybody? What, what are these attributes that you think, well, this is something that, that if we're going to, we want to have a great church culture, so we better be cultivating kindness. unity. Unity is a great response. Kindness, kindness absolutely. Fruit, fruit of the Spirit. Love, Love absolutely. Anybody else? Fellowship. Fellowship. What? Everybody said amen. amen. Pass the offering plate. Let's dismiss. Uh, no, it's exactly. All, and all of these, all of these are, are scriptural. You know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad nobody said, uh, you know, we need to get like, we need to have recognition. <laughs> or we need, to, we need to be bigger and better than our neighbor. No, we're talking about qualities that we want to, to have within our culture that, that, that we want to reflect. Amen? Uh, one of the things, and, and all of those are great responses, and I agree with every one of them, the one thing that really stood out to me was authenticity. Being real. Um, not, I, I don't even, it's called gaslighting. I don't really know what gaslighting is, I'll be honest with you. But I think, I, I'm not even going to try to tell you, I don't know. But I think it's not authentic. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't want to be one thing in front of you and something other than that wherever. What I am behind this pulpit, and I, again, I, none of you can testify to this, but I hope my family, my wife, my children can say, he's the same he, he's, not, he's not putting forth an image in front of you, and he's something else at home, okay? Uh, now, here's the thing with authenticity, though, and, and I think maybe this is why, because I think everybody would say, yeah, I think it's good to be authentic, but the reason why we may not be authentic is because if you're going to be authentic, you can't hide the flaws either, Okay? And so we, we, we typically like to, we like to hide the, the flaws. We would like to project an image to everybody else that says, hey, that guy's got it all together. Well, that's not really authentic because 
you don't have it all together. <laughs> there, there are issues. There are things that we, that we, that we deal with. I, 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 I talked about it Wednesday night that I had held on to an offense. And that's not something I'm proud of, of, of publicizing. Because, you know, someone say, well, you're a pastor. You shouldn't do that. But reality is we're human, right? And, and it's impossible that we, that we not face these offenses. So, so for me to be authentic, it's okay for me to admit, hey, I've held on to a fence that I should, have let, I should not have held on to. Now, does that make me look bad? In some people's eyes, it probably does. But the people who think that, that makes that me look bad are people that want to project an image that they don't have flaws. And I think it's okay to admit, hey, we, got, we do have flaws, but I value being authentic. I would much rather someone be real, genuine. Now, obviously, as a pastor, if I get up here and say, well, I had not smoked a joint in three, two or three days. All right, I may have crossed the line there. <laughs> Boy, that's being authentic. Well, I, I, you, got, you, you got what I'm saying. Again, I, I, for me to hold the office that I have, that God's called me to be, yes, I want to live my life right. But at the same time, there are going to be some flaws in my life. And again, being able to admit that, live that, overcome those flaws, again, I think helps everybody together to realize, you know what? I don't, because I think sometimes we think, well, for me to be a successful Christian, I've got to live a perfect life. And I'm telling you, you're not going to live a perfect life. And I, I always go back to what? I go back to motive. What is my, my heart? I want my heart to be right. And, and, and the reality that there are things that I may struggle with does not make me a horrible person. It makes me understand I'm human, but I'm telling you, God's going to give me the ability to overcome it. Amen. That there's a thing, not just mercy and grace, but there's the power of God. So um, if we're going to be authentic, then we have to also acknowledge our flaws. We do not hit it out of the park every single day. <laughs> Amen. I remember, uh, I forget his name. Um, he passed away. You're friends with his daughter. She's in Dominican Republic. Blash, Brother Blash. Uh, Brother Blash was here f several years ago. And, you know, here he's a psychologist and, and, and just a, an amazing man of God. And uh, he said, you know what? Uh, a lot of people don't realize this. We said even, even him talking about himself don't always have great days. It's okay to not always be okay. All right? Don't throw yourself under the bus. But just know that it's not going to be that way every day. Amen? I'm not going to hit it out of the park every day. So if a culture to be, to be healthy, if it requires continually uh, uh, intentionality, then it is, it is possible for a church that, used to, that had a great, healthy church culture to, for that culture then to start failing. Just because it was a great culture don't mean it's going to remain a great culture. Because if you're not cultivating it, if you're not being intentional, then that, that once was a great culture can start to, to fail. Let me ask you some, another question. What would, what would you consider to be the main reason that causes a culture to fail? Anybody? Inconsistencies. Very good. Anybody else? Hate. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Misperceived perceptions. Yeah. Anybody else? Fake? Not being authentic? <laughs> Absolutely. I think all of those. Yes, I think all... False? I think all of that is, is applicable. Uh, anybody else? And, and again, it's like, okay, what... You know, basically, to be a failure... To, for a culture to fail is just don't do the things that creates a good culture. That would be one way to think of it. I, I was reading, and I come across... And I, and I, I did not... This did not register in my, in my radar at all when it comes to a, a failing culture. But an expert said, in, in, in their opinion, the number one reason 
culture fails is, and I, I, you're going to be surprised. You ready? Rudeness. I did, and I'm like, what, what, wait. So then I got my attention. I'm like, okay, I got to, I got to, I, I want to understand this a little better. Rudeness? Has anybody ever faced rudeness before? Has anybody ever been rude before? Has anybody ever had a bad day and somebody crossed you? Again, we, we justify our rudeness. You know, don't, don't bother me today. I'm not in the mood for it. Type. So, um, so again, as I, as, I, as I read that, I thought, wow, that's, that's interesting. I, I, I would not have considered that. But when you, when you think about it, rudeness is at the core of bad communication. Um, it's at the core of disrespect. What, what, what is the people, people want to be respected. Now here, here's where we're, we're living in a culture now that you cannot respect someone that has a differing opinion of you. Like you cannot be friends if you're a Republican, you cannot be friends with a Democrat. Well, it's where we live. Like, like you, you, can, you, you can be on two different spectrums of the view. And, and like, if we, can, if we don't agree, then we can't like each other. We can't be friendly. Now, again, I don't have to agree with you to like you. I can... I can I can, what's the word, vehemently disagree with you. But that does not mean I, I, need, I, I, I have the right to be mean to you or devalue you as a person. Now, I don't agree with you. I, I, I've, had, I've had people that their views are not my views, and I, 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 you know, I do not agree with them. But that does not mean I don't, that I cannot be kind to them. And be and be respectful for who for for the person. Now, now again, I, I've had those though that that have these very differing views, and just because I don't agree or that I disagree with them, then they paint me as a villain towards them. Like, since you don't agree with me, you condemn me. Nope, never said I condemned you. You know, people that have have different lifestyles. Okay, scripturally, I'm never going to agree that homosexuality is okay in the eyes of God. Right. Now, I, that's not hate speech. Not for me, it's not. Now, our society claims now that that's hate speech. Okay? No. I, I, again, according to Scripture, that's where I stand. But that doesn't mean that I hate the person. Doesn't mean that I don't, I, I can't, and I'm not going to be kind to that person. So again, rudeness, and, and we, we see it in our, in our nation today, there is such a division. And I know the there's such, I mean, when you go to one end of the spectrum to the other, there, there, there is hardly no common ground anymore. But, but part of that, and I think both sides have played that to their, I don't want to say it's their, I think it's the nation's disadvantage, but maybe to their respective advantages. Because there's always, I, I remember, and this is how, and I do, I, I don't know why I remember this, but I remember back in the 80s, when Ronald Reagan was running against Walter Mondale. Okay, we didn't have CNN back then. You didn't have these 24-hour news stations. And, and I don't know why I remember, but I remember, I don't know why I was watching it, but I was watching the Reagan-Mondale debate. And I remember Ronald Reagan. He was an older man. I forget his age. He's in the mid-70s. And at that time, that was, I mean, no president had been that old. And uh, the question that the moderator had asked was, uh, Mr. Reagan, do you, do you think your age is going to play a role? Will age play a role in your ability to serve as president? And I'll never forget, Ronald Reagan said, well, because Walter Mondale was quite a bit younger. He said, well, I, I've never thought, but I don't think that his, that my, that my um, what do you call him, a, a opponent, uh, his, his inexperience would ever play into this he took it and he twisted around because Ronald Reagan always had these funny things to say but they both laughed about it I mean Walter Mondale laughed I mean it was a funny thing nowadays I, mean, I think I think we may have a couple of debates coming up 
It's like, it's like the WWE or the MM, whatever those things are. I mean, they're, 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 who can cut the other one down the most? No, a lot of rudeness. A lot of rudeness on both sides. So rudeness, again, the core of bad communications, it's the core of disrespect, and it's the core of disunity. Ultimately, relationships, entities, they fail because of rudeness. All right, so the Bible has a lot to say about this, and we're not going to read all what the Bible has to say. We'd be here all day. But I got a few scriptures I want to share. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, Paul said, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Everybody said, Amen. Jesus said in John 15, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Anybody here feel the Lord's loved you? He said, Love just like I love you. That's a pretty high standard. 1 John 4 says, Well, it just disappeared on me. It does say it somewhere here. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For, the, for one who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, capital H, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Have you ever said, have you ever, well, maybe you haven't said this. If you're authentic, you may have said this. I love you, but I don't like you. We've all been there. Amen. Romans 12 and 10 says, Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Amen. Uh, Romans 15, We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let, us, but let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up. Notice, it's not about us. Uh, Philippians 2, let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Amen. Now, in, in this congregation, again, the diversities of people, differencing differences of personalities, uh, I, I lean more towards the, the introvert. You know, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm comfortable in a corner. I mean, I'm comfortable being by myself. And there's others here that are more towards an extrovert. You enjoy being in a crowd. You enjoy being the center of attention. That's, that's a big difference. Sometimes an introvert can be uh, mistaken as being rude. Well, he wouldn't even talk to me. Well, if I'm in a room that's full of people that I don't really know, I'm probably not going to do a whole lot of talking. And I have been accused of being snobby. It's not intentional. I just don't care for people. Let me, let me say it this way. I'm just not comfortable around people. Maybe that sounds better. So, so I, I'm not, I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you if I don't know. I was telling someone earlier, I don't like small talk. Boy, the weather sure is nice out there. You don't care about the weather. You're just trying to make, and, I, and I'm not faulting a person because my wife can go up to anybody and start with small talk, and before it's over with, this person is confessing their sins. I mean, she just has that ability to, I don't have, I wish, I, I'm, I'm envious of that because I'm like, I just don't really want to talk to you. Is that wrong? But, but here's the thing. Here, here's where I got to be careful because that's where I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable in just, don't talk to me. Now, now, everybody here, I have no problem. I love you. You're, you're, you're part of, my, you're part of my, my world, all right? But outside this church, I'm like, you know what? I just don't care to talk to you. When I go to Walmart, I don't go to talk to people. I go there to get my stuff and get out as soon as I possibly can. But so, so again, with that, that's my personality. 
Now here's, here I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna step on my own toes. Even though that is my personality, is that the way I should be? No. Now I will never be an extrovert. I will never be. But I am going to attempt to be a little more extroverted. <laughs> the reason being is, is scripture tells me I need to be kind. I really can't be kind if I don't ever say a word. Now you, my fellow introverts, disagree with me right there. Well, it's better for me not to say anything. I'm, I'm kind. My point is, I want to show myself friendly. Right. It's hard to do that when you're walking with your head down. Yep. Don't talk to me. Don't. You ever done that? Yep. You ever walked in the crowd with your head down? Okay, just don't talk to me. Let me get through here with nobody. Am I speaking to anybody's language there? And, Extroverts like, what's wrong with you? Well, that's just that's that's what we're dealt with. We're introverts. We 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 are not comfortable around people that we don't know. My wife's like, what's wrong with you? She don't understand it. It's a real thing, though. It really is. And then when you do open your mouth, Laura, you say things that you are so awkward. It's like, I shouldn't have ever said a word. I. I that's just, that's us. We, we, we struggle. But, but my point is, I, I want to be careful. Because that's really, I, 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 don't, I really don't hate people. I really don't. I, I, I do love people. I just, they make me very uncomfortable sometimes. And so, I, I don't want to project this, it's just about me, and I, I, don't, want to, I don't want me to be bothered. Because these, these things that, that Jesus is saying, or, or the Word of God is saying makes me feel uncomfortable at times. And so I can't, I gotta be careful because I, I can go too far over the line and be something that I'm not, being not being inauthentic. But if, and this is something I, I, I try and, and God's helping me, but even if I do go to Walmart or wherever, Lord, if there's someone there that going to cross my path, I'm okay. Because I have been that one that, oh, there they are, and I've turned. I'm, I, that's a confession, and I'm sorry, but Lord, help me. The point of the matter is, though, is this. If you don't cultivate good culture, it's not just going to happen. It's not just going to exist. It's going, you get what you, what you cultivate. Now, Jesus said this, John chapter 13, and verse 34. He said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, now here's, here's the thing. By this all men know that you are my disciples, if you love one to another. Now here's the thing. I will never be as friendly as my wife is. I will never be that outgoing personality. But I'm going to tell you, I still love you. And yes, I, I have to push back against my own personality at times. And that's something I need to do. And I need to do a better job of that. Because I don't ever want to be considered as being a rude person. Because that is certainly not my intention nor my desire. Because in, 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 I do, I do and, and, I, and I shouldn't have said I don't like people. Because that's not true. People do make me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> but I love those people. And even, even Walmart people, they're a whole special breed, but I love them. I love them. Amen. But, but again, so, so, I, so I, hope, I, hope I hope I'm making sense here, but not everybody is going to be the outgoing person that other people. But even those of us that are, that are more introverted, we, we still understand and feel, okay, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be like everybody, but at the same time, I do have to push back against what my personality is because I want my perception I want people to perceive me as being someone that truly does care now I, I just don't show it as well as others but I want to do that because Jesus said by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another amen now again I, 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 may, I may struggle in front of a big crowd but you get me one on one. You get a. You give me a phone call. I, I'm again. I'm. I'm. I, I, it's. It's just different. Crowds are scary. <laughs> Amen. 
But what we don't eradicate, we cultivate. If I have something in me that's not what it needs. So, for instance, again, I mentioned it Wednesday night. We talked about the offense that I had that, that I held on to. You know what, you know what, 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 what was so bad about that is? Because that when, when, you wear, when we take a hold of an offense, and, and like I mentioned, it grows and it gets bigger. And, 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 and I was, I felt like I had been, uh, what's the word, um, not necessarily done wrong, but again, I, it, it, was, it was an offense. And, 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 and from my perspective, it was a legitimate offense. But when I held on to that, what it does is it causes me to say, you know what, I am never going to let that happen to me again. And so the wall goes up. Which, yeah, it'll never happen to me again, but it closes me off. That's where it limits my capacity. That's why I can't let that offense grow. I got to let go of it. I got to get rid of it. Because I don't want to be, I don't want to be in, in, uh, limited in my ability to reach people in my own introverted way. <laughs> so what we don't eradicate, we cultivate. We got to let go. That's why we, we, we let, let us lay aside every weight, sin. Let's get rid of those things. Let us run this race with everything we got. Amen? So we want a good culture. And to do that, we got to cultivate it. We've got to, amen, be aware of what Scripture says. And I want to love people the way Jesus loves me. And I know that's a high standard. And I know I come up short with that. But my intention and my desire, that's my target. I'm shooting for that. I'm trying. I'm striving. And how many here know that God will help you? Amen.